This morning I am on my way to the bow launch to a place that I seldomly fish. I uh, have the opportunity for largemouth and smallmouth bass this morning. I fished this place, I think it was about three weeks ago. Uh, got a couple decent ones, three pounders, one largemouth and one smallmouth. And, but I missed one that was huge. It was probably five and a half, six pounds. <clears throat> it was running drag off my pole like nothing. So that was kind of exciting. Um, although that story that the big one got away continues. I had a comment on one of my videos uh, a couple weeks back. A guy wanting to know where I was fishing and he had made a comment that I thought was kind of interesting. He said, I, I typically only catch the random smallmouth and have never gotten any largemouth. <clears throat> and I was thinking about why that might be. The reason that I'm going at four o'clock in the morning before and, and try to be on the water like fishing as it starts getting daylight especially with largemouth is because they're much more sensitive to light they they kind of migrate around during the day just just a little bit this time of year the water is really warm right now we've had a couple days it's been close to uh, 40 degrees celsius or around a little over 100 degrees fahrenheit but they'll come out and kind of come out of the cover at night um, starting in the evenings when the sun comes off the water and head back to cover uh, just before the sun gets back on the water or just after so you've got kind of this narrow window this time of year especially in the morning where if you get out there early the largemouth are very active very aggressive and you can get them There's something back in there. There he is. There we go. That's a good one. Let's see if we can get him away from the weeds. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a beauty. Come on, baby. There we go. That's a strong fish. Yeah, nice. Nice. Not as big as I thought, but. So my sole intent with uh, fishing this morning, catching this morning, is to uh, fish a very particular part of this lake. Uh, I've never had much success here, but the habitat, what it looks like underneath the water, there's got to be fish here. Um, about three weeks ago, I was fishing, just made a quick run through here. Um, caught caught one small mouth that was about three three and a half pounds beautiful fish but I also learned a little bit about what they're feeding on um, what depth of water they're in different things small mouth are kind of funny sometimes you know I think there's there's two main things that can really change the level of success that you're having. One is understanding fish behavior. Um, Smallmouth, the way we're fishing this morning is a really good example. Like if you, you had 90% of the bass fishing guys come through here and fish this, they'd be fishing right up along the shoreline. They'd be focusing right around the, the docks, right up in shallower water and there's likely some there or in the weeds here but knowing that the fish their behavior these smallmouth that we're after this morning 
um, have a tendency to really favor open water with rocky bottom, especially this time of the day when they're out actively hunting, can really change the level of success if you're fishing where there's more and bigger fish. <clears throat> the second part of that is, I believe imagination has a lot to do with the level of success that you can see with not only fishing, but lots of other stuff too. I mean, if you can, after you get a little bit of experience, if you can get a sense to imagine what that bait's doing underneath the water, if you're feeling something on the line, being able to imagine kind of what's happening around there, that'll help you make decisions on what you're gonna do next. Does it feel like I got a fish on? Am I bumping on the bottom? Is it time to set the hook? There's a lot of different things that you can kind of utilize with imagination. It's not very big, but it sure is feisty. That one was feisty for its size, wow. Man, these fish are feisty this morning. Just a little guy, but man, he hit hard. Oh. Give a short cast and see if we can find that guy again. Whoa, that's a good one. Oh. <laughs> that's what we were looking for. That is what we were looking for. Come here, big boy. Whoa, whoa, that's a good one. Oh man, oh, I'm having a hard time holding onto that with one hand. He is not ready to get in the net yet. This is exactly what I mean by having your knots tied right and using the right kind of gear. If you were trying to get this four pounder in the in the boat on six pound test. Come on. There we go. It never happened. Oh, look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful fish. We're gonna put this guy back today. We're gonna put you back today. There he goes. That was fun. <laughs> That's a perfect example of what I was talking about with imagination and fish behavior. I know smallmouth, if you feel them twitch on the line, they're usually pretty territorial, like they'll stay in one, one general area a lot of times. 
and you get a little nibble and you don't feel the weight of them on the hook or they just kind of spit it out or whatever if you if you can get that hook back close to them um, in a reasonable amount of time and just be a little bit patient a lot of times you can get them in this case it worked out well that was a beautiful fish probably three and a half pounds it wasn't really long but it was just huge girth on it and they are feisty this morning man that was a strong fish one of the other things about bigger fish too I find um, there's a lot of lures that have tiny little hooks on them and with these bigger fish they're so strong and their mouths are so tough that if you don't get a big enough hook into them it just doesn't the hook doesn't grab enough of the fish to be able to keep them on they'll they'll rip themselves right off of a smaller hook <clears throat> especially those big ones like that if you're using a little popper with a little a little tiny treble hook or something on it he would have just either bent the hook straighten it out i've had him straighten the hooks out before <laughs> come on come on oh yeah strong fish man these fish are healthy come on baby oh <laughs> that's a good one Wow. Try to take you right down to the bottom and tangle you up. There's a, there's a good Three pounder. That's a good fish. Yeah. Whoa. If I stay. This is a cool catch because this is a place in the lake that I have been trying for a very long time to get a bass out of and it looks like we may be keeping this one swallowed the hook we're just going to I'm just gonna cut the line off that we'll get that hook back later but he's already bleeding pretty badly so We'll have one fish to clean when we get back. That catch right there is a perfect example of adaptive fishing. I've tried so many different things fishing just right off this shoreline. I've seen them jump out here. I knew they were here. The habitat was perfect. I've fished this so many times. Never even gotten a bite out here. And with what I've learned over the last couple trips well the last trip and today we're able to come back in here and get not only start getting fish but really nice sized one so today very much is a success 100 percent
Oh, this is crazy. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. <laughs> Come here. Come here, big guy. This one's solid three. Beautiful, fat, healthy fish. Beautiful colors. Okay, well the fishing is slowing down quite a bit. The lake's getting busy. It's getting really warm. And we've had a very successful day. <laughs> <laughs> 